Today's Advocate is a special edition in which you could say we are reaching above and beyond through the virtual window to get those quality conversations you have become accustomed to. Today's panelists need little or no introduction, but it would be rude of me not to at least say something, if only to whet your appetite. I'll be igniting the fire by asking, by way of a challenge or even a provocation, who says history will not repeat itself? Bright Jaja is clearly provoked by the gap between rich and poor. In fact, he says he's never understood it. He's saying without being dramatic that the future of the world hangs in the balance. Then it's Nafisa's turn, Nafisa Atiku that is. She's stating without equivocation that one way or the other, restructuring is our destiny. She only advocates that it be a peaceful way. I agree with you. Nafisa We'll hand over the torch to Rugged Man, a.k.a. Rugged Ibaba, who needs no jump starting as he'll be hitting the ground running with his advocacy on our immoral immunity clause. Jejo Mojua was probably born for this. He wastes no time in tabling his advocacy that the idea that Nigeria is oil rich is merely a myth. Some might say we've saved the best till last. I say you'll be spoiled for choice in that regard. Judge for yourselves as we kick off on this first lap of our special edition after the break, you're watching The Advocate on PLOS TV Africa, Strap Up. Recycling is only productive when dealing in valuable commodities. I'm going to be saying, who says history will not repeat itself? Everyone is talking about turning over a new leaf and pressing the reset button as though it were an automatic, even inevitable process. It's as if COVID-19 came with the DNA to usher in change. Yet, much as we speak of new beginnings, it must be apparent to us, even in our subconscious, that we're going nowhere and may even find ourselves back where we started or worse, on the other side of the storm. We complain of a corrupt government and systems that are hostile to transparency. We dream of a revolution but are loath to utter it in our waking moments. If we're sincere with ourselves, we would at least admit that our leadership are but a reflection of ourselves, with the benefit of a few years of power and influence. They connect less empathic, more defensive versions of ourselves, but ourselves nonetheless. We're so preoccupied with craning our necks to see a time beyond the virus that threatens us from without, that we neglect the virus within. Who says history will not repeat itself when we individually behave like a people allergic to criticism and correction? We prefer the shadows to the light of transparency and accountability. We cling to power, not as a means to an end, but as an end in itself. We need to begin interrogating the systems of governance within our personal lives, our homes, our workplaces, and our spaces of interaction. To turn a new leaf in the annals of time, we must challenge ourselves even to the point of embarrassment. Forget how we look to others. For if we do not see a transformation in ourselves, we cannot hope for one in our nation. I know it sounds cliched, but change really does begin with you and I. Walking into a supermarket recently, I was impressed with how compliant everyone was with the social, social distancing protocols. Masks on, gloves, even a two meter distance observed in queues. I almost pinched myself. Could this be my beloved nation? And so we're capable of behaving in a disciplined way after all. Nigeria can write a new, more inspirational chapter in her history. She must. It's time to press release on the repeat button at long last after so many years. What do you say, guys? Well, that was an interesting piece, Eken. I thank you so much, and I so agree with you. You know, this pandemic has, you know, brought us Nigerians to a stage where we, where we have to acknowledge that things cannot just continue the same way that they have been. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see people. Actually, you're right, going into a supermarket and seeing people keep, <laughs> keep the distance. If somebody just coughs, you know, even as far as like two meters away, everybody's like, oh, no, 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 is, she wearing, is he or she wearing a first face mask? Are we keeping safe? And a whole lot of different things. It's really interesting to see how you know, in this mind, in our minds, we have this mindset that Nigerians can't change. Things just have to be the same way they are. But it's interesting to see how a pandemic is making us question our current, um, how do I put it, system and change for the better mm -hmm. and adjust, evolve. After all, we're human beings. We have to evolve to survive. Yeah. I know I had this conversation. Think, yeah, please go ahead. Oh, I, I think for me, it's just, uh, I'm just, I've just been wondering you know, how the change 
was so rapid, you know. Um, it took a pandemic for us to get to a point where we can be all together at the same time there to act. But I feel like we've actually been in the pandemic for like the rest of our life <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> it's probably not COVID-19, but it's co corruption. Yeah. Right? Corruption and every other yeah. thing that has been here. But like the fact that we have not reacted, I mean, we've, we've seen worse things, like I said, corruption. The fact that we've not reacted you know, this way towards other things, just really, like, it's what I don't understand why this was so important that everybody is doing the same. Like, but the fact that the government can lock down the system and all that, imagine they do the same thing and follow the same processes with other issues that we're having. Nigeria will be probably one of the greatest countries in the world. Yeah. So I feel like we should not just stop here. We should find a way to apply the same structure into our, you know, political everyday system life. and every other thing. Okay, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or more drive. I don't know. Are you seeing the same discipline? I know you're not. I, I, yeah. I don't think we're doing. I don't think Nigerians are actually. I don't think anything has fundamentally changed. Okay. I think we are speaking from our point of bias in terms of what we see people do, especially people around us that that mm -hmm. are not affected by the availability bias that is affecting most Nigerians and actually most people around the world. Mm -hmm. A lot more people do not care for COVID nineteen and whether anybody's going to get killed because they don't have a sense of risk or threat with respect to the virus. And the reason is because of availability by us. They don't know anyone who's been affected personally. They don't know anyone who's been killed personally. Mm -hmm. And I don't just speak for Nigerians, I speak for everyone around the world. So we have about 4 million people affected globally. That's a lot mm -hmm. of number. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the fact that there are 7.6 billion people around the world, it also then means that most people around the world actually don't know people that, are pers that were personally infected or dead. So by and large, we are still really very, very irresponsible as to what we need to do. I know there is a perception that people are actually, you know, we, we've had, we've seen skits, people, somebody calls and everybody runs and everybody disappears. But just take a look around, actually. People are still badly behaved with respect to their reaction to the virus. Actually, interestingly and, enough, I wasn't necessarily saying that the change was pervasive. I was just saying that that gave me hope. The fact that we could even do it on any small scale gave me hope that we yeah. still had it in us to behave I wish correctly. I, could see, I wish I could see hope like you do. Um, okay. I don't. Maybe because I live in a country that has lost about 30, over 30,000 people already. Okay. And this is one of the most advanced countries of the world. Um, mm -hmm. Also, you look at America, they've lost over 70,000 people. Two countries lost 100,000 people to something that never existed, say, seven months ago. Something that did not kill a single person in these countries. Okay, I think we're, we're looking at the whole year, from just, different perspectives. Six months of the year. Yeah, so I have bigger fears than most people because I live right inside it. Yeah, you're looking at the mm -hmm. hope uh, from the point of view of the COVID-19 and overcoming the pandemic. I'm looking at the hope. As in, when the dust settles, will we, as a mm. people in Nigeria, have fundamentally changed? So I'm looking beyond that, so. and I'm saying Nigerians in terms of our discipline. Nigerians have never reacted to crises as an opportunity. We are the country where a major accident happens on, say, an Otedola bridge. In a, in a normal country, that would spot the carriage of inflammables. That would spot the a, a new laws as to how you can move things like that around. We are not that kind of country. If Grenfell Tower had happened in Nigeria, Nothing would have happened to, the, to, to, to codes on building and how to build and uh, safety issues and the likes. I, I said, and I said all over again, Nigeria is not the only country that tragedies happen. The primary difference between Nigeria and most other serious countries is that they learn from the tragedies, so they don't get to suffer from the same things that cause that tragedy. So they experience new tragedies, not the same fire incident, not the same kind of accident, not the same kind of corruption. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have enough data or enough experience to say that Nigerians are going to come out of COVID-19 behaving better. When I say Nigerians, I mean Nigerians as a population and Nigerians as a government. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I, I don't know if Forget Man is there. I can't agree with him, though. Yeah. I can't agree with him just thinking about, you know, most of the things that have happened in the past and how we don't even change anything. So I can't agree with him with, when it comes to that. I just, I just, I just think also that, you know, um, there's, the fact that it's affecting most of the leaders, it's now going to be a must for them to want to put structures in place. You get what I'm saying? Because it's something, it's, it, it, it's different when it's, it, it's affecting just a particular kind of people, a particular set of people, and, and so people are exempted, yeah. from, exempted from, from, what, from, the, from the repercussions. But the fact that it's affecting, yeah. you know, leadership and it's affecting everybody, and nobody is, you know, not 
be able to, 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 to have this disease, disease, it will force them to put structures in place. Like I always say, um, if we wanted the educational system to work in Nigeria, we should put a law that states that all you know, um, office holder, whoever wants to run for office, must have their kids go through Nigerian schools. Must. If you, don't, if you know you're not going to do that, don't do it. Don't, don't run for office. If we do that, they're going to fix it. They're I think I have to agree with you on that so one. Now that it's affected the yeah. I yeah. think they're going to put measures in place. Yeah, I wasn't right, that, thinking that, that, like I, I wasn't thinking I like actually you. Actually, appreciate your optimism <laughs> bias, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not able to suffer from it because I know what it is. <laughs> yeah. um, that's optimism yeah. bias, and it makes sense. It's it's normal to 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 think like that. But I can assure you, just take a look at every other thing that has affected them. These guys want to travel out of the country. For the ones that don't have private jet, they have to go to Ethiopia or go to Dubai or go to some other country to connect. That has not affected them. They have one little headache or one medical issues. They have to go to London, to Germany, to India. That did not affect them. They pay hundreds of thousands of pounds and as a collective, billions of, of dollars to educate people abroad. There is nothing COVID-19 has done to our political class, to our elites that they've not dealt with before. The only difference is that there's the urgency. After COVID-19, that urgency will, will not be in place. So the only difference that COVID-19 brings to their lives is urgency. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, we have to, we have to stop that conversation there. Hey, hopefully we'll get to hear where your hope lies, Amodra. Okay, we're only just getting started. <laughs> After I'm that. Okay. I need to know where it's so blind. Don't worry, we'll, we'll continue the conversation. After the break, Bright says, no point taking more than you need. How much is that, I wonder? <laughs> 